Yeah, well, guys, I have also tried to measure the resistance here of the bus bars when we had the problem. Um, I couldn't see any problems across the whole range of terminals and bus bars here with this device at all. All the resistances I could measure were in the same area, so there was not much difference at all, and you wouldn't be able to tell which is a good or bad connection. And this is mainly because... So the bus bar should be flat on your terminal to have a good connection, right? That's what we all know. But even if you have a connection like this, you have very, very good connection between the aluminium bus bar and the terminal. It is just one point where they touch, but the resistance is very, very low. So you cannot actually measure or qualify your connection with an internal resistance meter. Because even the resistance is very low, once you start pushing serious current through this one, the small connection area will of course heat up and causes the candle effect, which we have seen in the previous video. So only a really flat surface, the contact area is important here for our high currents. And this is not something the internal resistance meter can actually measure. So this was a good tip from you, but it didn't help solving the problem. Instead of reorganizing all the battery cells, I have just relabeled them also and they are in the correct order as shown in the BMS now. I really didn't want to rip the battery apart again just to reorganize the cells. And welcome to another video here from the off-grid garage. We've got minus three amps outside. It's still raining. Don't ask. Don't ask. And we are still offline. Two weeks later and they still haven't fixed the internet of millions of people here in this area. Okay, it's probably more like 70. So I had to sneak into the guest Wi-Fi this morning to upload a video for tomorrow morning. Because I haven't shown a video for three days and they're all piling up on my computer, so... Man, I need some internet, really. Anyways, in today's video, I want to show you what I have gotten delivered here the day before yesterday. Ah, oh, this is this stuff. Here, yeah, the terminals have shown up already. I was really surprised that they showed up after only, well, one and a half weeks since I ordered them. And they actually look pretty good. I've ordered also three end caps here to, to, seal, up the, to seal up the terminals. And I also ordered three sets of numbers, 1 to 20. Well, what they have sent me now is like 30 sets or so. I don't know. There was something wrong. I only paid for three of these sets because I have only three batteries. Well, I've got heaps of numbers now from 1 to 20. If someone needs them, let me know. <laughs> well, when I ordered the terminals, I made a mistake because they had the offer if you buy 50 of them um, you get them a little bit cheaper of course rather than buying them individually or in a pack of five or ten or twenty or so so a pack of 50 and i thought well i've got 16 cells three times 16 is 48 so perfect a box of 50 amazing yeah well not quite because because i then realized i need actually 17 per battery because we need to connect our negative cable as well so Ba -ba. I'm one terminal short now. <laughs> Happens only in the off-grid garage. <laughs> okay, so I have already prepared our Dean rail here. You can order the Dean rail as well from the same company on AliExpress. They've got all sort of terminals and also these end plates here and the numbering as well with either numbers or letters or whatever you want to prefer. And of course, they also have the end clamps, the stoppers here. Well, I had them already, so I just take them because I've got like six and a half million of them in stock. And you use this end plate here to isolate the very first terminal. 
and then the others will isolate against each other. So here on the side we've got the WKDQ which is the company who makes these terminals an IEC number and the specs 800 volts 28 amps and 2.5 square millimeter cable maximum. All this stuff is already linked on my website. I post the link down below if you're interested in these terminals. Okay, so this is how the terminals look like. They've got the normal terminals, of course, with one entrance and one exit. They've got the duo terminals as well, which have one entrance, one exit, and another entrance and another exit, which are then totally separated. Or this one here is the twin version with one entry, but two exits. And you can see the little bus bar here inside this terminal going to one contact and to the other one. So on this side here, I want to connect our battery cells and then we will connect the BMS and have the other contact for additional devices like active balances or another BMS we want to connect to. And all these terminals have this spring mechanism where you just push in your cable and it gets clamped between the bus bar and a spring. So here, for example, we've got a one millimeter ferrule and we push this into the contact and you can see the little spring mechanism here just got pushed down by the ferrule if i put this all the way in that's how it looks like then and to release it you just press on top here of this orange button and this will release your cable again and we could see it goes already that far in so the ferrule will go in all the way and the spring mechanism will push the ferrule against the bus bar on its full length and the same is then happening here for your exits as well. So when I push this in, you can see the little spring mechanism there getting pushed down. And the ferrule will then be pushed against this bus bar here and on this side here against this bus bar. So obviously now it makes sense to have cell number one connected to terminal number one, right? But, um, well, as far as I can remember, there was no number zero for our negative bus bar. I took off the number 20 here and scratched off the number two. So now we have a zero for the negative terminal. Zero to 16, it goes. Okay, so now here comes the task to transfer our wires from this terminal row to this terminal block here. And we can only do this one after another because um, I cannot undo all these screws here and take off all these cables here because if they touch, it will be a short between two cells. Whatever touches, it will be short and it will blow our 5 amp fuse. So I have to start with the negative terminal number zero and then first cell up to 16 all across here and we just have to push them in so there are no screw connections or something it should go fairly quickly with the balance leads going into the bms here i usually would cut them the length i need them to connect to this terminal here but i pretty much know myself quite a while now and I can already tell you that the JK BMS will not be the final BMS we have here in this battery. And for this reason, I will keep the balance leads as they are, as long as they are. So we can use the BMS here with a different battery in the future. Because if I cut them to length, 
some of them, most of them will be so short it will be very difficult to use for another battery and then I have to extend them again which would be a total pain in the... So we leave them as long as they are and we will organize them again with uh, Velcro afterwards and make this all tidy looking neat and tidy. Okay, let's turn off the battery first. So the whole show runs from this battery now. And now we can take off one balance lead at a time and push them into the terminal block here. I have to crimp some ferrules on these ones here as well. At the moment there's nothing, just the bare wire into the terminal here. With these clamp terminals here, I either have to solder the end or I have to put a ferrule on it to actually make it work. So here comes our system negative and this goes obviously in terminal number zero. And we just have to push them in. That's it. Yep, yeah, they are solid. Easy. That's pretty good. These terminals are really nice. They've got a nice strong clamp and holding the cables tight and secure. I really like them. So far. So I just tried to put a ferrule on the normal balance wire coming from the BMS, but the wire is too thin, so the ferrule just comes off. I have now doubled the cable. I just stripped it double the length and then folded. It's now bended. And let's see if we can still get this in. Yeah, there I can see the cable. That should work well. Yes, that is secure. Nice. So the only next challenge is now to get these cables into the clamp because with these thicker ones I could just push it down with the cable but these cables are far too thin here so I don't think I can push them in all the way they're coming out again I probably have to push the ferrule in yeah that works okay I can push the ferrule in all the way and then they are secured or maybe I can just release the spring mechanism here. I can push this in. Then hold it. Yeah, that's another way to do it. Doesn't really matter. Okay, next time let's... And for the last contact we have two cables anyway, cell number 16 and the main positive for the power supply for the BMS. So I don't need to strip them again, just put them together into one ferrule. And I push in the clamp and the ferrule basically falls into the terminal. Then release the clamp, done. I'm really impressed with these terminals. They're holding really, really tight and strong. Okay, so next step would be, um, I want to measure the balance leads again before I connect them, just in case I've made a mistake here or something. Just to be sure, because if you make a mistake there, it will potentially destroy your BMS. And I would be crying here in the garage once again. <laughs> so, <laughs> better measure it again. Okay, so I have now connected the balance leads again. I have checked them all for voltages so this is all good and plug them already in to our BMS here and well it took me a while to organize these cables now I'm not super happy with these ones here because some of them are a bit shorter but I cannot pull them anymore maybe eventually I cut them off the same length so they fit a little bit better here um, this one is not quite as I was expecting it. It's a bit messy here in this area, but that's fine for the moment. Balance leads are nice and tidy, curled up here, plugged into the BMS. I already have connected our start battery here with eight volts to the BMS. The positive of this battery goes to B minus, and then you use the negative of this eight volt battery pack and just wipe the negative here until the BMS starts beeping. And then we can take off the start battery again, the booster. Amps. And we want to see the inrush current again when I turn on the breaker. 
and we parallel the batteries again. Let's see what happens. Okay, we are on. 20 amps only. See, the battery was off for probably an hour. There was only 20 amps. Going from this battery into this battery, because this got further discharged while this one was offline. And now we are seeing 20 amps only going from this battery into this one. You can see it's tapering off. I love this self-balancing battery. Nice. All right, guys, I would say so far this video from this rainy afternoon here. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and thanks for all your support and your generous donations. I really appreciate all the donors who are supporting the channel also financially. Until the next video, guys, when we work in the 12 volt department again for a little upgrade, you stay charged and safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. I really like these terminals here. They are nice. See, and now we've got the second row here for an active balancer or another BMS, which we can just sit over here. Perfect. As always, guys, you're finding the links to all the materials and all the tools I'm using under the video, as well as the batteries, bus bars, terminals, BMS, even my multimeter and the circuit breakers are linked under each of my videos pointing to my website with all the information and all the links where you can buy them. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. And of course, I've linked this Velcro here under the video as well. They just, this stuff is amazing. Look how organized these cables are. And you can take it off again and reorganize them or rebuild them or reuse it. What a great invention.